Hi, this is Leslie, our Wednesday talk, and as you can see, I lost Lexi. <laughs> yes, she did. I'm Jim. Well, yeah, we have a special guest. I'm so excited. Jim is here today. Lexi is not available, so I'm like, oh my gosh, people, you guys love hearing Jim talk. So, uh, we are going to talk today. You Actually, Jim is going to talk. You can ask him so many questions, but we're going to talk strength, flexibility, adhesion, and all that Hardness good stuff. Hardness and shaping. Yes. Which and is shaping. So so important. So, Jim, you've got some props here. I'm just your sidekick prop, so uh, I'm I, I'm just here to Aww. to watch you. <laughs> so, uh, what we have, if we were going to talk about hardness, flexibility, tensile strength, elongation, and shaping, what we're going to look at is this is one of our first little tools that what we that? use for testing testing how flexible something is. So we have, these are called mandrels. And they range in diameter. And so when we do heart uh, flexibility testing, what we try and do is wrap a sample of gel around the mandrel. But we don't start with the narrowest one because if it was too rigid and not flexible enough to wrap around the narrow mandrel, it'll break and then the test is over. So we start with the big baby. So what we'll do is we'll take something like a sample and we wrap it around the mandrel. So this, this is, is gel? All cured this up? is gel cured, but it's this is cured for a different test. But we would take it and wrap it around that mandrel and see if it bends or breaks. Hmm. And then if it doesn't break on this mandrel, you go to the next one and you bend it around that one. And then we just record which mandrel it finally breaks on. Wow, that's a lot of testing our juggles. Through. The more flexible it is, the closer you get to being able to wrap around oh, this. Wow. And what you do is you actually wrap it around so it's a 180 degree fold uh -huh. on that mandrel. Okay. Okay. Wow. So that's flexibility. So if you ever wonder how do we get flexibility testing done, now you know. It's this very sophisticated <laughs> box <laughs> with sticks in it. <laughs> so anyway, so that's one test. Okay. Flexibility. I'm gonna put flexibility aside, unless you guys want me to put it back out there. I see you get up there and do the splits. No, see, no, that's sure true. I'm not that flexible. <laughs> I've never been able to do the splits. This is a little piece of plastic. This is gel. Mm -hmm. I just cured it in the lab, so okay. I'm being very careful with it because it's not fully cured yet. Okay. But when we take this piece of gel, what we do is we use a mold, and the mold is a certain width, a quarter inch a certain depth and then a hundred thousandths of an inch and then we cast it so we pour gel into the mold we cast the piece and then we cure it and then we let it sit for 24 hours okay why do we let it sit for 24 hours mm, because it's not done curing because it's not done curing <laughs> and if it has not sat for 24 hours it could be more brittle lacking elongation and tensile strength okay so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and mark this piece here at one inch okay. and then we put it in the jaws of a tensile elongation tester and we stretch it Ooh. torture chamber <laughs> it, think of a rack yeah a rack in the basement of some castle someplace <laughs> with an evil person living above it you're going dark <laughs> we're, go we're going on the rack with this one so we, we rack it we stretch it out wow. and then when it finally stretches to the point where it breaks that's elongation at break okay. it's also tensile strength at break Okay. So we'll measure how far that one inch stretches up. Sometimes it'll stretch up to an inch and a quarter. That'd be fun to see. Sometimes it stretches up to two inches. Okay. Sometimes they stretch even further than that. And it's good to have that, right? It's Well, it depends upon what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. The more elongation, the more flexible it is. I'm gonna bring back our cute little, our cute little mandrel bend test. So, but we'll go ahead and stretch that out. Okay. So the longer it'll stretch, the more it'll wrap around the mandrel. Right, before that breaks and then uh, the other thing is it'll give us our tensile strength so what is tensile strength at break tensile strength at break is how many pounds does it take to stretch this to the point where it breaks and we have a gauge on the tensile strength elongation testing unit mm -hmm. that will stop at its maximum pressure its maximum force to break it okay and so when it stops at that maximum force we record that we know the width 
of the sample and the depth of the sample. So that calculates pounds per square inch. So we measure in pounds. We get a cross-sectional surface area in square inches. And we just divide pounds by the square inches and it gives us our force. It's a lot of math. It's a lot of math. A lot of science. Yes. This is fun science. No. We love data. We that's, love data. That's what we're all about here, we love right? Data. So anyway, <laughs> he so loves we'll, data. <laughs> we'll go ahead. Okay, I love data. Yeah. Alyssa loves data. Yes. Major loves yes. data. Yes. Denise the loves data. The chemists love data. The chemists upstairs in the R and D lab love data. So anyway, that's what this one is for. So we can go ahead and measure tensile strength and elongation. Elongation has a reflection on what the mandrel bend is going okay. to be. And then we can also measure hardness. So hardness would be we take a hardness gauge and we push it up against this. It's a sharp needle that's attached to a gauge. And then, hence it's a hardness gauge. And so then we poke it with the hardness gauge and it'll give us a readout of short A or short D hardness. Wow, that's most a lot of our, testing. Most of our gels, we do a short D hardness test on them. Okay. Because they're hard and short D is harder than short A. Tennis shoe soles are usually like a short A hardness of 50 to 60 short A hardness. Mm -hmm. But if you're taking a look at acrylic plastic, that's usually somewhere in the short D hardness range of 90. Okay. Most of our gels in the short D hardness range of 70 to 80. So once you have all this information gathered, We write it down and we record it and we have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> I was going to say, how does that go into our gels now and what... Uh... So a lot of times when you have a flexible nail, you want to use a flexible gel on top of that flexible nail. So Jimmy Gel, being one of our most flexible gels, would be one thing that we can take a look at. So the Jimmy Gel has a mandrel bend of the one sixteenth of an or one eighth of an inch. That's flexible. That's flexible. That's very flexible. It also has Not an elongation. This test, where it'll stretch to fifty percent its original length. So oh. if it starts out at one inch, it'll stretch up to an inch and a half. So that's fifty percent. So, and that means that if the nail is flexible, the fingernail is flexible, it'll bend with that flexible nail right. and not cause lifting. The more rigid the fingernail, the more rigid the gel is that you can put up on top of it. Okay, like a fiber would be our most rigid. Would it? Nope. Nope. Oh, I Fiber is not our most rigid dead. material. It's pretty rigid, isn't it? It's fairly rigid, but more rigid than that is extreme or builder. Okay. In one step. All right. So fiber is kind of a flexible nail because it's designed to move with the crack of a nail. Mm -hmm. So if you use fiber to repair a crack in a nail, you right. want that fiber to have some flexibility to it. Right. So it will move and stretch a little bit when that nail moves and stretches as not to re-crack that fingernail. Good patchwork. Patchwork. Yes. It's like okay. a blanket of strength. All right. That goes so we've over always the said. top of the crack. I like it. Anna says, I'm a laboratory technician, so this is so interesting. Oh, oh that is great. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna, yeah. yeah. It's fun to have Jim talk about this stuff, the science stuff, right? The sciencey stuff. So if, um, what would, okay, so Jimmy Joe would be our most flexible gel. Right. And then what would be like in second place after Jimmy Joe? Fiber. Fiber, okay. Yeah. All right. I learned something new today. You know, P plus is pretty flexible too. Okay. So actually quite flexible, but just in the building gels, right. we're looking at Jimmy gel, then fiber, and then we kind of, kind of go up to cool gel. Okay. And um, I have a chart that we have uh, that we share with people, but that'll give us all those flexibility and hardness. And range. then also what goes into all this is shaping and how that affects you are keeping me on track, aren't you? Uh, well, yeah. He's a taskmaster. Uh, well, hey, I, I got to keep him on track. And, and he, I, he can go down the science rabbit hole like you can't believe. I get to hear it all the time. So <laughs> when we talk about flexibility and we talk about strength, we can also talk about shaping. Mm -hmm. So some people think that if you build a nail that is flat, but just make it thicker, it's going to be stronger. And in a way, there's some truth to that. But who wants a big block of gel on the end of their finger? So what you can do is if you take a piece of paper, obviously not very thick, yeah. and it's just flat, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be more flexible. Mm -hmm. But if you put a curve into it, that curvature adds strength. If you then put an arch into it so that the gel arches this way, now you have a 3D curve. That 3D curve is the strongest form that we have given 
the initial strength and physical properties of the material that you are curving. Got it. Right? That's a good way to look at that. That when you did it flat, it just it just goes walks. down. But then the paper becomes. Weak. So you put that, that curve That's in there. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> and then if you throw that arch into it. Right. So you think about the perfect shape. Mother Nature's done a great job. Right. What is that shape, Leslie? The egg. The egg. The egg. <laughs> so an egg is a great shape. It's not that Mother Nature made the shell any thicker or had to make it any harder or had to make it any stronger. We just put a curve into it. We, I'm including me with Mother Nature. Mother Nature just put a curve into it. And well, so, it is true. It's a very fragile shell, but because of the shape, it does absorb a little bit of the impact. And what's on the inside of that egg? A whole bunch of good stuff to eat. No, yeah, or future stuff. future stuff to eat too. <laughs> so when the baby's trying to escape, it pecks from the inside out and cracks the shell. Which from the inside you can get that to happen. From the outside ah. it's much harder because you're pushing down against the curvature. Ah. But if you're pushing up against the inside of that curvature, it breaks open pretty easily. Wow, I hadn't heard that far. I just learned so much every time you talk on these. You also said what I remember too as a visual is a car bumper. A bumper that, on a car. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the impact if you get rear-ended, it's designed to be curves, yeah. it takes it in that impact. I, I've been rear-ended before. And... You have been. <laughs> um, a couple of things you could take a look at would be bridges. Mm. Bridges always throw a curve in there someplace, unless it's a very short span bridge. The longer the span, though, the more curvature you're going to see being utilized to help support that structure. We do have another question. Okay. Yeah. How are you determining what is considered the appropriate hardness level for specific needs in different people? Is there a general guideline or study in the nail world that scientists follow? No. We guess. <laughs> um, no, actually what it is, is this trial and error because the best way to figure out what's going to work and not work is to evaluate various hardnesses. So when we formulate new products, the first thing we'll do is formulate something that has the physical properties, generally speaking, of whatever gel you want it to do. So if you're looking for a hard gel or a soak off gel, does it soak off, does it not soak off? What's the expansion contraction coefficient of that gel when it's exposed to acetone? As well as what kind of adhesion do you get? What kind of gloss do you get? Once we have all of those things satisfied, then we'll make it in various hardnesses. So we might start off at 65 hardness, 70, 75, 80, 85. And then we'll apply all those hardnesses on a few different test subjects. Find out which one that nail technician prefers. Usually it's Diane, our guinea pig here at the lab. And then after that, then we send it out to some of our educators who then test and evaluate to get a broader spectrum of it. And they have lots of forms to fill out so that we get all the information from them so that we can pass that on and make the best gels possible for you guys. So it is trial and error. So we experiment to figure out what's that target market? What is it that we need to formulate to have that product do? And at this point, since we've been doing it for 24 years, so we have a pretty good guess on what kind of hardnesses <laughs> seem to work and not work. Yeah. But good question. A lot goes into this. I mean, the science behind it, and sometimes we don't realize that, you know, techs open up a jar and they want it to perform and everything, but all the stuff you go through, and Jim's so thorough and so methodical about all oh. this, takes the science very seriously. So it's we serious, are very though. fortunate to, to have you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. And thanks for having me on your show. Okay, um, anything else you want to add or wrap this up with? I think that we're pretty good to go. If you guys have any questions on this, um, please reach out to us. We're always here for you. And if you want Jim to appear again on our Wednesday little show, we can bump Lexi off or we can have you do it, Lexi, and you can bump me off. Well, I don't want to bump you off. That sounds aggressive. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Anyway, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Jim, for being here. Thanks, Leslie, for the invitation. <laughs> All right, thank you. We'll see you next Wednesday. Who knows who will be here, right? All right, bye. Bye.